Okay guys, so today I'm going to show you how to uh, basically, you know, how I achieved these wings on this girl here uh, for a project that I did. Um, yeah, so basically we're just going to go over the puppet tool, uh, the different aspects of it, how you can use it to achieve something like this, and, uh, you know, how to just animate with the puppet tool in general, I guess. So uh, we'll make a new project. I think my computer is freaking out because I'm rendering something in Cinema 4D right now. But hopefully it uh, lets me get through this. So we'll import our assets into the scene and drop this into the composition maker, the footage. And uh, I think around here is where yeah. Or I felt like she looked like maybe she was a bird spreading her wings and flying away or you know whatever. Um typically, you know, I just pulled these wings from some other project I worked on a long time ago. Uh they don't really in my opinion go very well lighting wise. I mean, they're okay. They're much better than they could be, but um, normally I'd, I'd want to make this in Cinema 4D or, or Maya or whatever the client preferred so that I could light them, but I only had, uh, I, I don't know, we had two days to make two and a half hours worth of footage for a concert, so it was a lot of work. Anyway, that's be beside the point. So we got the wings in here. Uh, the next thing we'll want to do is hit Control D, duplicate these wings, then hit S on the keyboard for scale, then unlink your scale, click on the X axis portion of your scale, hit a negative to flip these wings around, because you know, wings are generally symmetrical, symmetrical, the same on both sides. It's a golden rule. Anyway. <clears throat> So um, we've got the Puppet Pen tool up here. This is uh, where you'll find it. Uh, you're just going to click on it, come over here to your, you know, your wings or your whatever, your, your character that you're working on. And the Puppet tool works a lot like um, character in like the bone system in Maya, except for that it's much less complex, obviously. Um, you want to put your puppet pinpoints in areas where you know you you want to deform things. Um, you want your deformations to happen. So uh, basically, I'll put one pin here, and as you can see, uh, you probably won't see this mesh by default. You can click this up here to show your your puppet tool or your assets mesh that is created when you start using the puppet tool. Um, then I'll also put one of these at the very end of the wing here. And then I will put one probably, probably like here and around here. And that should be okay for what I need. Um, if you're animating a character, you might want more than this. Uh, it just depends. So. Once you put your puppet tool points down, you can actually just click on them and start pulling. Uh, you can also go over here, go down to mesh, click on it, drop it down, click on the deform, and then you have your puppet pins. And you can see as I click on these, uh, the highlighted yellow thing switches from you know puppet pin one to puppet pin two, three, four, five. Um, so uh, we'll just shape this, you know, kind of how we want it. Uh, if you don't think that your puppet pins are far enough out, you can always erase them and make other ones. I think mine are okay right now. There's also this compositing options here. Uh, I know I'm kind of getting a little off track, but um, you know, I don't. I've never really used this, uh, but just so you know you can there is an opacity effect on this to you know partially get rid of 
the puppet pin tool if you wanted to do that for some reason. I don't know why you would, but that's there. Um, so basically, all I really did here is I just kind of, you know, set a keyframe. We're not at the beginning, unfortunately. Um, but as you can see, the puppet tool automatically sets your first keyframe for you based on where you first uh, clicked it. And then I just kind of went forward a little to here. And I grabbed this. And just moved it uh, until I got what I wanted. Which, you know, might take a little time, but it'll be alright. You'll, you'll figure it out. I believe in you. You believe in you. Hopefully. And then just go through and see how it looks. And it, eh. Maybe it could use a little more deformation here. And, uh, you know, that's, that's pretty much uh, how it went. Uh, let me trim my timeline here. If you don't know what I did, I just took this yellow thing, drug it, or dragged it, well, I don't know what, what is proper. And then you right click here and do trim to, trim comp to work area. And, uh, let's see. And uh, I think, you know, I think I'm just going to do one wing. I think you can get get the gist of the puppet tool from um, just this one side. If you do want to know, um, you know, how I got her head behind there, <clears throat> or in front of the wings, I guess, I just, you know, they only need a few frames of this. Uh, I guess I'll just draw it out. It's probably going to be better. So I just, uh, use the mask or the roto, whatever, whatever you're used to referring to it as. And I, uh, drew out a path around her head and then, um, of course, uh, if you don't know what I did, I just double tapped M to get your mask tools up and, uh, you know, then I just feathered it a little bit, and it looked okay, you know. Like I said, they only need a few, a few frames, so I didn't have to do a ton here. <clears throat> and, yeah just animated the mask like that until uh you know till I till I got done with uh, the frames I need to do this for okay um so there you go you know there's some some very very quick animation that could be much better uh and I hope whatever you are doing, you do much better than I'm doing in this tutorial, but the point of this tutorial is just to, uh, you know, show you the tool so you know, you know, how you can uh, experiment and use it with your own projects. Now, there's a few other things about um, the uh, Puppet tool that don't particularly apply to this, but are important to know, especially if you're doing some type of 2D character animation. Um, if you hold down here you can see that there's two other tools here they're called puppet overlap tool and the puppet starch tool and the uh, overlap tool if you you know click on it and get it uh, basically if you you know if you set a couple points here uh, then you'll notice there's an overlap down here that shows up in your uh, puppet tool and um, basically what it allows you to do 
which is particularly useful with things like animating uh, character hands or sometimes their legs as it allows you to uh, position uh, this is a little more obvious if you show the mesh uh, it allows you to uh, to tell After Effects which part of this mesh you want in front of you know if you want part A in front of part B over here so if for some reason I was gonna overlap these wings so that the wing kind of you know came out in, in Z space or in three-dimensional space and, and pushed itself over here um, I could tell it that I want all of this part of the wing to be on top of this part of the wing. Uh, so it'll be in front, you know, 100% or, or whatever. Um, same idea here. You can make this part of the wing so that it's, you know, behind it. And as you can see here, uh, is indi ah, I need that back. Um, indicated by uh, the color of the portions of the wings, this is much lighter than this. The darker or or um, more white portion, if you bend this over it, is going to overlap it. Um, maybe I can demonstrate that. We'll see if it'll work with these wings. Let's see. Yeah, it's kind of hard to do with four points, but you can kind of see here how this, which is definitely 100%, uh, you know, in this overlap one overlap two range, is is on top of everything over here whereas um, you know everything that was definitively in that overlap one range that we we made uh, is behind it now if you reverse these and made this you know like two percent now that wing is going behind rather than in front and that is the entire purpose of the overlap tool it's very useful it it is extremely important if you are doing character animations that you understand <clears throat> how it works. Um, so, you know, I guess now you know. Uh, the other thing you can use is this uh, Puppet Starch tool, um, which is also useful in its own way. Uh, basically, what it does is it makes your your area that you define uh, on your puppet or on your animated asset whatever uh, stiff so basically whenever you put down one of those points you can see that a stiffness uh, drop down menu appeared and then there's the starch and then um, you know it's it's basically the same idea as the overlap tool except for the in front turns to the amount and basically all the amount is is just um, you know how stiff it is basically how much you want it to move um, so you know the, the higher the amount the uh, less likely you are to get that that thing to, to, to move the way you want it to so but, um, or I guess theoretically, if you know what you're doing, you will be able to move it more the way you want it to. Anyway, it makes it harder. Harder. Um, so there you go. That's a breakdown of the puppet tool. Um, it's very simple once you know what you're doing with it. And, uh, hopefully, hopefully now you know. So, um, Hopefully that was useful to someone out there. I uh, got a new mic, so hopefully my voice sounds better and less noisy and irritating. So I will uh, see you all next time. Thanks for watching.